you know, I've been listening to the conversation and as someone who's a former CIA analyst and, and Pentagon official, I spent my time as, you know, focusing on foreign terrorist organizations, particularly from the Middle East, including Al Qaeda. Um, and it just seems like when we're talking about foreign terrorist organizations and the use of violence against American citizens abroad or threatening our homeland, there's significant agreement on the need to prevent that and, and frankly, on the extreme work that continues to go on largely below the headline level by our intelligence community, by our military, by a whole bunch of folks who, who have never taken their eye off the ball. And I'm conscious that we haven't had another major attack after 9-11, which still is kind of amazing to me. Um, but the minute we start talking about threats to American citizens inside our own borders, it becomes deeply political. Um, and I think the the thing that um, that I guess affects me as a CIA officer is that we have to go by the data. And while uh, folks like Mr. Van Drew are talking about an even handed approach, um, I have no problem if a group on the left is using violence, go after them. But the data reflects the data from like the director of the FBI, not some group that's political that the vast majority of those cases of domestic terrorism are coming from the far right. And they are mixing, many of them, not all, many of them are mixing their ideology with anti-Semitism and white supremacy. Um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm concerned that it feels like such a hard thing to talk about threats to American citizens because they're Americans perpetrating the attacks, um, it's still a threat to safety. According to the head of the FBI, it's a bigger threat than foreign domestic terrorism right now. So I just felt like I needed to say that. That said, the similarities between extremists and this ladder of escalation that they climb from being kind of regular old Joe to feeling like they need to commit violence against another group or another person is strikingly similar between foreign terrorists and domestic terrorists that ladder of escalation. Social media, like you said, I think Jonathan is rocket fuel on that climb up that ladder. Um, my question is this, as a, someone who comes from a state with a lot of militia problems, extremism problems, many who were arrested participating in January 6th, has anyone seen anything that works that deprograms people and takes someone who threatens violence against another person or another group and gets them from that to back to healthy American citizen um, in a multi-ethnic place. I, I never saw it successfully done on the foreign terrorism side. So starting maybe with Mr. Rasmussen and then going to, to uh, Cynthia and Jonathan, please tell me, is there a model that works? Because this is like affecting our communities at the grassroots level. Thanks, uh, Congresswoman Slotkin, thank you. It's great to see you. And I'm happy to try to contribute to, to this conversation. When dealing with social media companies or technology platforms, we always tend to focus on what they should be stopping or taking down or preventing on their platforms. And of course that makes sense for all the reasons we've been talking about. But some of the work we're doing at GIFCT brings those same companies together to talk about how to better structure positive interventions yeah. online okay. to try to intervene in that cycle, that radicalization process that you just described. And that needs to be, to your point, a data-driven effort because you can wing it and not necessarily know that you're achieving results. And so one of the things we're trying to do is bring companies together, bring the academic community into that conversation and begin with a research driven agenda that tells us, okay, what works? How can you redirect someone? What kind of platform intervention? Is it an ad placed off to the side that says, if you need help, call this number, or if you feel disenfranchised or, or at odds with the society you live in, you know, reach out for help in this way. The prevention architecture might be might be what we need to think about here. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I know I went long, so I'm gonna ask that Mr. Greenblatt and Ms. Miller address just send me if you have any good data to send me because um, I'm frankly very interested in that. I just would say um, on the social media companies, um, is it true that the more extreme the article on the right or the left? the more clicks it gets. And therefore, these companies do not want to take this content down because it gets them more clicks and more engagement. It is, is I'll, I'll volunteer, it is true. 
That's if it bleeds, it leads. We learn from social media, right? And so clicks are driven, Rep. Congressman Slotkin, by the most sensationalist, scary, terrifying content. And it travels far and wide. Change the business model, you would change the behavior. Give, make them liable for what they promote, you would change the behavior. Thank you. I know my time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.